I've just heard this on the radio, and I'm telling you, this is why there's so much confusion out there. Dr. Malhotra said, and I quote, An obese person does not need to do one iota of exercise to lose weight. They just need to eat less. Nice one, Doc. Yeah, you're technically correct. They don't need to. It's not a necessity. Lock an obese person in a dungeon with only water and vitamins, and okay, they'll lose weight. Great advice. also technically correct that if you gave them their current diet and just made them do 12 hours of CV a day, they'd also lose weight. So by that rationale, you could also say an obese person doesn't need to do one iota of dieting. They just need to exercise more. And the problem here is that both of these statements are convenient, quick, impactful, but really unhelpful. All these guys are chasing sound bites, but the solutions to the problems don't fit in a sound bite. Why do you think my videos are so long? It takes multiple minutes at least to explain the complexity, and the answer is individual for each person. I had a friend who gave me the soundbite. It's just calories in, calories out. And for him, it was. But for others, it's not. He wasn't overweight, had never been overweight, and he was healthy, strong, and fit. So for him, it was calories in, calories out. But how many people who are overweight are starting off healthy, fit, and strong? How many obese people out there are all those things and just eat too much? I'd suggest that the greatest majority of those who are overweight are missing out on at least one of those vital components, if not all three. Here's an example. If you're a runner and you're injured, it's really frustrating. Your 5k running friend who isn't injured says, well, running's just about putting one foot in front of the other. But if you're injured, Running is so much more complicated than that. Quick fixes and sound bites are a great way for those without a problem to feel superior to those with one. It's so easy! All you've got to do is... And if you don't have a problem, then it is. If I have a teacher at school explain something to the class and you didn't get it, first they explain it again really quickly. Then they explain it really slowly and patronisingly. I don't know, maybe they're hoping their incredulity at you not getting it is going to somehow aid your learning process. And what sound bites really demonstrate is a genuine lack of understanding of the complexity of these problems. Preaching to the converted is easy. Helping and educating those that it doesn't work for, though, that's tough. Now, the fine print of his message is actually nuanced and quite reasonable. It essentially says, most people can't or won't do enough working out to offset consistently wrong food choices be that wrong amounts of carbs and or fats. Quote, you can't outrun a bad diet. But someone like Michael Phelps with his 10,000 calorie a day high carb, high fat diet outswam it though. Phelps justified it by saying all he does is swim, eat and sleep. Like he's the only one. Every Olympic swimmer just swims, eats and sleeps. So that's obviously not the differentiating factor. And the other Olympic swimmers don't eat like he does. But it works for him as an individual and that's the only factor that matters. The sad part here is that the media needs sound bites and doctors give it to them. Dude, the reason you're being asked is because you're a doctor. You know, all that education, expertise, training, blah blah, and all that knowledge and research can be squeezed on a t-shirt? You're leaving the average man and woman thoroughly confused. There are so many factors that play into obesity and even resistance to weight loss. When everyone was told, just do it, in regards to exercise, the physio, osteo and chiro offices were overflowing with people. Why? Because just do it isn't that helpful. When we were told, fat's bad for you, a whole generation struggled with their health because they didn't get the right amount or type of fat in to support their health. And now the low carb thing's back around again, and it's a time bomb for their average man and woman's thyroid and adrenal function. Now, I actually agree that eating less high GI carbs for most people who don't do high intensity exercise is a good thing. The way they work out in the waste room or on the CV means they don't have a lot of use for the fast acting sugars. They can predominantly fuel their general lifestyle with fats, and so less carbs could be a good thing. But people hear the general demonization of a food group, be it proteins, carbs, or fat, and as a population, they make a wholesale wrong choice. There are those who train really hard that will think a food group's bad because the advantage Advice is, that food group's bad. There are others that don't cope well with stress and add to that stress by cutting out food group. And there are those that have a balanced diet and are doing fine, and they make their diet unbalanced by cutting out a food group. Now the doctor will say, he's talking about the obese, and the obese generally have a lower capacity to exercise, hence his statement. But he's forgetting that the obese, carrying all that extra weight, are actually burning through more sugars in everyday life. And also, carb cutting wastes muscle. Now, cutting calories generally wastes muscle, but there's evidence to show that cutting carbs wastes more muscle than cutting fat. And the muscle wastage has to be offset with heavy, 
relative to the person, weightlifting to preserve the muscle. Now the obese, although they're heavy and you'd think they'd have to maintain muscle in order to shift all that weight around all day, actually have been proven to have less muscle than the average. MRI studies have shown this, but study schmuddies. Now one explanation offered for this was that the obese do actually try to diet on and off more than the average person. And each time they do, they lose muscle and don't replace it when they come off the diet. So over time, less muscle, more fat less metabolically active, harder to exercise, more damaged thyroid, less fat loss, more dieting, less muscle, etc. Now the calorie or food group restriction idea is used in bodybuilding and it's really successful. But beyond the fact that steroids do preserve muscle through the cutting phase, bodybuilders also have a massing phase after the cut. Bodybuilders have a massing phase which is heavy weights and eating more and then a cutting phase which is heavy or lightweight, and eating less. Dieters have diet and exercise, normally CV and eating less, and then binge phase, which is no exercise and eating more. So, no, you don't need to exercise. But it's a really good idea. Unless, of course, these diet-only doctors are gonna start advocating that the obese start taking anabolic steroids to preserve the little muscle mass that they have while they're sitting on the couch. Mental doggy bag time. Everyone who's obese has their own individual circumstances that created it, and therefore their solution is gonna be individual. There's no one size fits all. There's a one size fits some, and that size hurts others. Sound bites aren't useless, but they aren't commandments. Collect them, consider them, and maybe try them. But realize that a solution that takes 10 seconds to say is really simplistic, has others arguing against it, is probably worth about a penny a second. Hit the thumbs up if this makes any sense, because then it's worth at least four quid. And if you like my vibe, please subscribe. <laughs>